the ripoffs that have ever occurred since Adam alayhi salam set foot on earth. The biggest ripoff of all is the one that is occurring in our miserable lifetime while our scholars are eating halwa. You're going to have to forgive me tonight if my language is a little bit harsh because I think the language up there is going to be a thousand times harsher. A thousand times harsher. I think that Allah's anger must be red hot, boiling hot with this ummah. So you're going to have to forgive me tonight if my language is a little bit harsh. He said, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, I leave behind me two things. So long as you hold on to them, you will never go astray. The Book of Allah and my Sunnah. The Book of Allah and my Sunnah. And his Sunnah is not only the bed, it's a nice sunnah, isn't it? <laughs> his sunnah is also money. Money. Money is also his sunnah. What kind of money did he use? Do you know the hadith? He said, it's a very famous hadith in Sahih Bukhari. It is seldom properly understood. He said, gold for gold, silver for for silver, wheat for wheat, barley for barley, dates for dates, salt for salt. Like for like, if it's gold on this side and gold on this other side, like for like must be equal for equal. If it's dates on this side, and dates on this side, like for like must be equal for equal. Other than that, it's riba. What is common to all the six things mentioned in this hadith, you will not find this analysis in Abdullah Yusuf Ali, I'm afraid. A British technocrat, that's what he was. What is common to all six things mentioned in this hadith? Gold, silver, wheat, barley, dates, salt. Is that they were all used at some time or the other as money. If gold and silver were scarce in the market in Medina, they could use dates as money. So they were all used at some time or the other as money. The second thing which is common to all six is that the value of the money is huh? in the money. They all have intrinsic value intrinsic value the value of the money is in the money if there's a transaction involving what is this noise we can hear the wall nothing tell the wall stop making noise please <laughs> If it is gold on this side and gold on that side, the same money, then like for like must be equal for equal. Hmm? Bilal radiallahu ta'ala who came to the Prophet Islam with a basket of dates and he offered him some dates and they were very high quality dates. Bilal, he said, these are very high quality dates, where did you get them? Bilal radiallahu ta'ala who replied, he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, I had two, two baskets of inferior quality dates you know, and I exchanging, exchanged them for this one basket of superior quality dates. Bilal, he said, this is the essence of riba. What you should have done was to sell your two baskets of inferior quality dates and take that money and buy the one basket of superior quality dates. Why was it riba? Because dates were used as money. 
So if you have dates on this side and dates on that side, there must be an equal exchange. But Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, if you know the answer, put your hand up. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he exchanged one camel for four camels. Bilal exchanged one basket for two baskets. He exchanged one camel for four camels. And Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu exchanged one camel for twenty camels. And it was not riba. Why not? Because camels or animals could never be used as money, correct? I work for the month and you give me my salary, a goat, taking the goat home. When I reach home, my wife asks, where's your salary? I said, it died on the road. <laughs> Or the boss gives me my salary and the next day I go back to the boss and say, boss, problem with the salary, salary has fallen ill. He said, but when I give you your salary, it was healthy. <laughs> so animals cannot be used as money. Hmm? Because animals were not used as money, you could exchange one camel, a, a, an adult she camel, pregnant, for 20 baby camels. Hmm? All right. This is money in the time of the Prophet This is money which is Sunnah money. One day, Europe was attacked from inside and a Europe which had become Christian suddenly lost its Christianity. While Europe was Christian for those centuries, Christian Europe fought a ferocious battle against riba. <coughs> yeah, Christian Europe against riba. In fact, one of the best books on riba ever written was written by a British sheikh. What was his name? Shakespeare, Shakespeare. correct. William Shakespeare, which book? Which book? Merchant of Venice. Merchant of Venice. I will not have the time in this lecture, otherwise you have to give me three hours, to explain to you the brilliance of William Shakespeare in Merchant of Venice. But you'll get it, that analysis is there in my big book on Riba. In Merchant of Venice, you see Christian Europe in its attempt to ensure the prohibition of riba. There is another book, not as famous as William Shakespeare's, but this one is also a classic. Take a note of it, you might want to search for it in the library. The name of the book is Religion and the Rise of Capitalism. I would make this compulsory reading in Darul Ulum. Oh yes, Religion and the Rise of Capitalism by, by an author whose name is R. W. Tawney, T-A-W-N-E-Y. And in this book, Tawney records the Christian struggle against riba in Europe. But when the French Revolution occurred, the back of the Christian church was broken in Western Europe. And when was it broken in Eastern Europe? Which revolution? Bolshevik. Bolshevik revolution. How come we're only getting the answers from this corner? <laughs> the Bolshevik revolution broke the back of the Christian church in Eastern Europe, in Russia. When once the back of the, the Christian church was broken in Europe, the Jews were delighted. The Jews were delighted. Because the Christians had been waging a terrific war against the Jews for centuries in Europe. We will not allow you to lend money on interest. Mm -hmm. 
And the Jews always wanted to lend money and interest. Why? Because they had changed the Torah. I think I explained this to you. They rewrote the Torah 